Hey, it's Matt from Hidden Machine here again with a, another first impressions video. This time around, I have just, literally just a few minutes ago, completed my first playthrough of Alan Wake Remastered. Now, this is my third time playing through the game. I played it on the Xbox One, and then I played it on PC, and now I'm playing it again on PC via the Epic Game Store. And, uh, you know, I, I, have, I have some mixed feelings about it, so I'm going to talk about the good, talk about the bad, and uh, we'll see where it shakes out. So, full disclosure, I am a huge fan of Alan Wake in case you couldn't tell by just looking around the channel. I'm also a huge fan of Remedy in general as a developer, so obviously I'm, I'm a bit biased uh, going into this, but, you know, let's, let's talk about the good. Uh, good thing, game looks good. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm not a graphics snob by any means, and I, I you know, I don't care so much about frame rate, uh, you know, as long as it's playable, I don't mind if things, you know, I mean, I, I remember when games were 30 FPS consistently, and, and that was normal and fine. So, having the game, uh, being able to access it at 4K, 60 FPS, or higher, is, is really great for people. Um, you know, that's not personally a thing I care about, but the textures look good. Now, I, I think the textures looked good in the original game as well, but the real advantage of the remaster is that it gets the game to new audiences, like people who wouldn't, first of all, just people who wouldn't play it because, you know, it's an older game, and, and I know some people are weird about that, but uh, also people, you know, who don't have a PC, don't they don't have a uh, Xbox 360 or anything laying around, and you know, they want to play, uh, you know, a nice new version of Alan Wake. I think it's a great way to bring new people in. Uh, the other positives, there were a couple of interesting little Easter eggs and, and things that kind of work to connect Control and Alan Wake a little bit more explicitly. Now, I think a lot of those connections were there already. I think they're just kind of you know, doubling down, so to speak. You know, I, I think that a lot of the connections between Alan Wake and Control, uh, outside of the AWE DLC for Control, were things that you kind of had to dig a bit deeper for, so it's nice to have the connections kind of like right there in the game. And uh, aside from that, you know, I, I, I think Alan Wake is just a great game. I think it's a must-play title. I think it's very unique. I know there's a lot of criticisms about the combat and the camera or the way he moves and you know those are the things I've heard forever about the game but I, I think if you can put those things aside and just go well hey that's how the fucking game works <laughs> you know uh, I, I think it's a really really good game uh, not to say it's a perfect game but I, I think it's a very unique game that they with a very strong story and a strong visual presentation that's only made stronger by this remaster so, Alan Wake being a good game really is the best thing that it has going for it, you know, coming into this remake. I, you know, personally don't think the remake was entirely necessary, having just played the game, you know, right before the remake was even announced. I had completed the game for a discussion video that we did on this channel just a little while ago, and so the game's very fresh in my mind, and, you know, we, we all talked about how... You know, I, some criticisms of some of the, the facial expressions and the face models and stuff, but, you know, generally, uh, in terms of textures and lighting and, and presentation and, and design and the effects and everything, it's just, it's a very solid-looking game. It looks, you know, great in the remake as well, but it's not something where the game looked like trash and, uh, you know, the graphics were going to be something that was really holding back uh, modern gamers from being able to enjoy it. If anything, I think certain things like, you know, the controls or the way that you can't really easily track collectibles <laughs> is uh, are things that would hold back modern gamers. But, you know, speaking of those things, let's get into the negatives. First negative for a lot of people would be, you know, I, I just feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't address this, is that on PC, where Remedy, you know, got their start, they make PC games predominantly, 
it's uh, exclusive to the Epic Game Store, which I don't really understand why people are so mad about that. Um, people are saying, I've seen a bunch of people online like, oh great, Remedy sold out to Epic, way to go, fuckers. And it's like, I don't know, it's a fucking game publisher, get over it. <laughs> like, games, games need publishers. I don't think that Steam uh, being a monolith and monopoly in online game distribution is healthy for the gaming industry at large and and gaming as a hobby and an art form it's just it's not good to have only one thing and only one place to go um you know the, not to get like too uh you know cranky old man about this but you know you used to you used to have to go plug in a bunch of different systems if you wanted to play different games and now everything is is online and and the online distribution makes it so easy that even if you're playing like console exclusives you can usually stream them to your pc and you know it, it's the, the ecosystem of gaming has become very much like that you don't really need to go too far outside of your pc or your console to play pretty much any game and the differences between pcs and consoles are becoming fewer and fewer with every generation so personally, you know, I use a PS4, I use an Xbox One, I also use Itch, I run EXE files from my desktop, I use MAME, I have a MAME cabinet, I also use GOG's launcher, I'll use Origin sometimes, or the Rockstar launcher, I obviously use Steam, I use DOSBox. <laughs> You know, what am I, I, it's not a big deal for me to go through a few extra clicks to launch a game. And, and that's one of the biggest complaints I've seen from people is like, oh, I don't like using a second game launcher. And it's, yeah, I don't know. At that point, I think you're really just mm, being a baby <laughs> in a way, but maybe that's just my perspective. I'm not saying I'm right. So that's not really actually a, a negative for me, but I know that is for a lot of people. To me, it, it's almost a you know more of a positive. I had to put it in either category because Epic is allowing Remedy to publish more games, and it seems like Remedy is retaining their IP. Which you know, in the case of Quantum Break, uh, Remedy doesn't own those characters and doesn't own that IP. Microsoft does, and so you're not going to see the Remedy Connected Universe necessarily. Uh, bring in those Quantum Break characters in the way that we know them right now because they don't have the rights to. You know, similar to the situation with Max Payne, they no longer have the rights to that character. Uh, I, I like that Remedy is in a position where they're working with publishers who are not also retaining the IP of the, you know, games they're creating. I did mention the collectible tracking. You know, things like that. You, you know, when you play the game, you can see how many water bottles or <laughs> they're not water bottles they're thermoses you can see how many thermoses uh, you can also probably see how many water bottles you've collected it would be zero because there there aren't any to collect but you can see how many thermoses there are how many uh, pages pyramids and you know the can pyramids i should say not and not any other sort of pyramid yet uh and the the rough part with this is that you don't know which episode these collectibles are in aside from the pages. And I, I honestly think that as, you know, time's gone on, people have gotten used to having more information when it comes to tracking collectibles and, and finding little secrets and Easter eggs like that. Like, there's a little more hand-holding. And I don't think that's a negative thing at all. I, I kind of like, you know, just at least tell me, like, which episode did I miss the thermoses in? If I'm trying to get all 100 thermoses, just get just let me know. Like there, there's there's 15 in this chapter, or you know, just the some basic info. I think those things could have easily been implemented into the game without uh, changing the overall experience too much, or you know, without 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 changing the integrity of of, of the original experience. Now, I, maybe that's a discussion they had at Remedy, and you know, so be it. It's not the biggest deal, but it, it's. The kind of like small quality of life improvements that I think would go alongside things like up the textures and increasing the frame rates. But apparently not. 
Another negative for me is that although the game does come with the two DLC episodes, nothing was done to include Alan Wake's American Nightmare, which is a standalone title, and again, I, I also think that game looks absolutely fine. I think it's aged very well, considering, <laughs> considering you know, uh, how old it is, but it is a standalone game. It's not really the same thing in terms of publishing and all that jazz, so I, I would have liked to have seen it included. Uh, it's kind of a bummer because now I think that game is already a bit of a black sheep for people. I've seen people who think that the game isn't even canon in the Remedy universe, and it, it, it is. I, I will I will fight for that game, but I think this doesn't do any favors for the already uh, troubled legacy of American Nightmare. To go back to little uh, quality of life improvements and, and, and things like that, another thing I was really hoping to see in this game uh, was having the audio levels adjusted a bit. Now, I hit one point where my audio ducked so low uh, at the start of a chapter for some reason, start of an episode, <laughs> I should say, and I, I don't know why. It was very strange, and then the other thing that really has always bugged me about the volume in this game is that the little flashes that you see of Barbara Jagger pulling Alice down into the dark place are extremely loud. And I'll play one here, you know, to give you some context. There was a link between us, always would be. I could feel its presence. It is so jarring. And I think that it could you could have it be a very jarring thing without it being so fucking loud. It is crazy loud. And I, I really thought that this was something that was a bit of an oversight in the original game. And I, I thought it, I really thought it would be um, adjusted. I don't want to say corrected, but I, I thought they would adjust that in the remaster and they definitely did not. And in terms of, you know, my audio dipping so low in, in, in that one episode, um, I'm gonna say that was a bug, and this game unfortunately is much buggier than the original, which is kind of like the worst strike against it, because it's such a good game, it's such an old game at this point, you know, in terms of how fast gaming moves, it's really a bummer to be encountering bugs that are, for some people, they're, they're game-breaking bugs that make them lose their progress, which is really not something you want to do to your players, you know? Uh, I, I can overlook certain things where if the frame rate drags, in, and it, it did in this game, it, it, the frame rate drops during cutscenes, there's like weird stutters, and, and you know, I, I double-checked my settings and also looked online, and a lot of other people were experiencing the same thing. Especially, you know, I'm talking specifically about the cutscenes. <sighs> Man, I mean, you do not. I, I don't. I don't mind little bugs like that. But when I have a bug that's going to make me lose my progress, that just it sucks the fun out of the game. Uh, that's one of the worst things that can happen to me. You know, in my mind, you know, in terms of like game bugs, is like game breaking bug where it's like, great, now I'm fucked. Now I gotta stop, start over. I personally encountered this, I believe this is episode 5, where you're going through downtown Bright Falls with Sheriff Breaker. She somehow got separated from me when I was going around the buildings and searching for collectibles and just got stuck in this corner, which was frustrating. So I thought, eh, whatever, I can't get back to her, I'll just restart from the most recent checkpoint. And so I, I go, I reset the checkpoint, and she's stuck in a new place. And it's just running into an object here, and it was very frustrating. Now, I wasn't super far into this. It was just the kind of thing that's like, man, that fucking sucks. And I, I, I saw a lot of other people online, you know, d discussing a lot of graphical errors and frame rate issues, which I always take that stuff with a grain of salt because I don't know anyone's PC, and I've seen some real moronic <laughs> PC users out there who uh, don't understand that they can't run every game at max settings while also running a bunch of other stuff that's taxing their, their computer, 
But I, I, I do think that, you know, there's obviously got to be some valid uh, critiques of, of, of the performance issues. But also I saw a good number of people talking about bugs that just made, you know, the game unplayable uh, up to a certain point, And then they'd have to go back and try to find a point they could restart from, which usually doesn't, you know, doesn't mean you can go back to a, a checkpoint, but you have to go back to the start of the episode. Another really frustrating bug that I encountered was I went over to the television where you watch the talk show scene with Alan uh, right near the end of the game. I turned on the TV and nothing happened. And then I turned the TV off and I couldn't get back to it. And it just, you know, triggered the next scene in the game. That that was really frustrating. I'm not sure if that's something, again, it's hard to say with some of these bugs, like, were these bugs that were in the original? Like, did I do something to mess that up? Did I, did I you know, trigger some weird series of events? I don't know, but I didn't encounter any bugs during my console playthrough or my playthrough of the Steam version. So, uh, I don't know. You know, can I, can I really wholeheartedly recommend this remaster you know even you know despite the fact that i think everyone should play alan wake i honestly think that if you're a console player yes go for it it's the best option out there if you're a pc player i would lean toward recommending the steam version of the game rather than the you know remaster i'd, I'd recommend the original version because this epic game store version does not come with all the bonus material that's featured in the Steam version. And, you know, I think there's some really, really cool stuff in there. Specifically, you get, uh, you know, some video files. Those include some making of behind the scenes videos and some music videos related to the project. You get a series of PDF documents, like you get the, uh, the, the screenplay for the game, you get the entire score, you get the soundtrack. I, I mean the score, I mean like the score written out. Uh, in sheet music form, but you also get the soundtrack, you get a number of high resolution uh, images, you know, for backgrounds or wallpaper. In addition to those other PDFs, you get two comic books that expand on what happened to certain characters in the game when, you know, during events that you didn't necessarily see what they were up to, this kind of fills in some of the blanks for you, and it also comes with a copy of the Alan Wake files, which is a really awesome piece of in-game lore that I, I think all this stuff is like crucial to the full Remedy Connected Universe Alan Wake experience. Like if you want to know about all this stuff that they're building, I think reading that material is crucial. And so while it's cool that Remedy did stick a couple of things in this game and the remaster to kind of like, you know, make nod to the Connected Universe, uh, the Steam version does, I think, a lot more for the lore than these, you know, very minor Easter eggs that are included in the remaster, which don't really give you any deeper context as much as they just kind of like affirm, hey, it's connected. The last thing I'll mention, which I, I don't think is really a negative or a positive, it's something I feel honestly, uh, disappointingly so, uh, a little neutral about, the game does come with a new commentary track. now. The original PC version also had a commentary from several of the developers uh, that you could turn on, and, and every now and then they would pop up in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. There'd be a little video of them, and they would speak about, you know, what you're seeing in the game. They would give a bit of, you know, developer-specific insight, you know, similar to when you're watching a show and you're, you know, listening to the uh, audio commentary from the creators. You, you get some information that you would never get otherwise. You know, you get some of that behind the scenes kind of stuff where they talk about maybe the motivation behind certain decisions or, you know, some of the uh, struggles they had in, in accomplishing, you know, certain certain things in the game and, and, you know, whether it's visually or technically or in terms of the writing or presentation or whatever. And they, they give you some background and insight on that. And it, it's a really cool way to play the game. And if you want to see it, you know, you can go on YouTube there is a video out there that has all the commentary bits in, in one collection, which is, it's, I recommend it if you're a fan of the game. The remaster has a new commentary track by Sam Lake, which is presented in a similar style where at certain points in the game, he'll pop up and 
rather than a, a video, you get a, a still image of his face, which, you know, even that, I was like, oh, man, like, you couldn't, you could, couldn't do the video? Like, I don't want to sound greedy. I'm, I'm really thankful they did the commentary at all. It's, it's a cool new commentary track, but it, it felt like a step down from the original, if that makes sense, just because, you know, it, it, the video is a nice touch, and it would have been nice to get the video on this one as well. Not Now, in terms of the actual content of the commentary track, my other kind of complaint about this is that for the most part, it has nothing to do with what you're experiencing in the game. Uh, it seems like Sam Lake got in the studio, laid down, I don't know, I, it's hard to say, maybe, maybe, you know, short of 20 minutes of, of recollections about the experience of creating Alan Wake. Uh, talked a bit about, you know, the writing process and, and the background of the game and a little bit about, you know, how it connects to control and, you know, a little bit about mm, Finland and, and some of the characters and, and life and his experiences. You know, it's like a, a little, a little retrospective. I don't want to say like a, like a full on postmortem, but it's a little retrospective of Sam Lake's, you know, experience and, and feelings uh, and... Alan Wake, uh, the history of it, the creation of it, and also the remaster. And but it's very, it's a very brief commentary track that is clearly just chopped up. And you can tell at certain points they've edited it, so he's clearly mid thought. And to space it out longer, they just kind of stop him, and then you play for like 10, 15 more minutes before you hear the second half of that statement. The other thing I found to be very frustrating is that almost all of the commentary tracks queued right while other dialogue was happening in the game. Oh, like, almost every single time. Not quite, there was a few that were silent, but the majority of them were conflicting over other audio tracks of people talking, and it, it was honestly kind of like hard for me to pay attention at points because I just, I'm already kind of hard of hearing having the two voices, even with the game audio ducked beneath the commentary it's still very clashy and it, it was frustrating the whole thing was very frustrating in the end uh i was really hoping for a lot more from the commentary track and it's good but i would have just as much enjoyed a, a 15 20 minute lecture from sam lake uh, to accompany the release of this remaster so all that said i do want to be clear that i don't have any regrets or you know second thoughts about having pre-ordered this or having spent money on it and you know playing through it again I i'm glad i did it was a good experience you know i'm really intentionally trying to put my kind of hypercritical lens you know on while while looking at this game and the remaster and you know if, if i had to compare i i would still strongly recommend the original version if you haven't played it yet and you're looking for a pc version i also think it's again worth mentioning that I did just play the PC version a few months ago. If I hadn't played this game since it first came out, I don't know if I'd feel the same way about, you know, the, the graphics and, and how well it aged and how, you know, it, it, it'd probably be pretty crazy to not touch a game for 11 years and then play a nice 4K remaster. So all in all, that's the good and the bad from my perspective. But I'm curious, let me know down in the comments what you think of the remaster, if you've played through it, or if you're thinking about playing through it. And uh, yeah, subscribe for more of this type of content all month long, and uh, you know, hopefully for a long time after that.